think we are indeed live, so let's start the introductions. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome Hello. to uh, session one of uh, Into the Wild Coast, Great Heart Into the Wild Coast, uh, with myself, uh, your GM, Lessons Learned, and this wonderful uh, crew that I have assembled here. Well, actually, Theta assembled them for me, and now they're. Oh, well, when do we get to meet that crew? <laughs> <laughs> And so we are going to start with our introductions, as we always do, uh, well, at the beginning and end of a session. Uh, starting with Theta, who is going to tell us his, introduce his number of character, uh, bonds, uh, ideals, bonds, and flaws. Oh, everything, huh? Yep. I'm playing Gar, the wizard turtle. Uh, personality is there's nothing uh, I like more than a good mystery. My ideals are self-improvement. The goal of a life of study is the betterment of oneself. My bonds is I sold my soul for knowledge. I hope to do great deeds and win it back. And my flaw is unlocking an ancient mystery is worth the price of a civilization. Uh, go to Shay. Uh, all right. Hi, I'm Shy, and I'm very cold today. And uh, I'll be playing Elspeth Dayon, the half elf cleric. Uh, uh, as far as personality goes, um, El Elspeth is very uh, self indulgent and not afraid to basically spend money and make every day feel like, uh, you know, treat every day like it was her last uh, because it just might be. Um, she absolutely refuses to become a victim. Uh, and refuses to let others as well, so um, she can be very uh, protective over others. Um, as far as ideals go, um, she hunts monsters to make the world a safer place and exercise her own demons. Uh, as far as her bonds right now, uh, there is evil in her, and she can feel it, and it must never be set free. And uh, her flaws is that she has an addiction. She is an avid smoker. Uh, Crumb? Okay, so um, just get it up. Yeah, so yeah, I am playing as uh, Vashra, the half orc uh, barbarian. Um, her personality traits are I'm driven by a wanderlust that led me away from home, and I place no stock in wealthy or when well mannered folk. Money and manners won't save you from a hungry owlbear. Um, ideals are I must earn glory in battle for myself, for my clan. Bonds are, I am the last of my tribe, and it is up to me to ensure the names uh, enter legend and flaws. There, are no, there is no room for caution in a life lived to the fullest. So a very headstrong character. That's good. Griffin? Hey, everybody. I'm remembering to put my microphone down. I'm playing <laughs> Olervin, the Wood Elf Ranger. Uh, he is a cautious and flighty individual who believes that the younger races need our protection and guidance. He's friends with hunters and pathfinders of all sorts, and he simply does not understand the point of money. And last but certainly not least, uh, are no Thief, uh, Nick. I'm Nick. I will be playing Halbert Nackle, the uh, the gnome rogue. I've got a joke for every occasion, especially when uh, occasions where humor is inappropriate. Sarcasm and insults are my weapons of choice. Uh, my ideals are friendship. Material goods come and go, but bonds of friendship last forever. Uh, my bonds are I swindled and ruined a person who didn't deserve it. I seek to atone for my misdeeds, but might never be able to forgive myself. And, of course, my flaw is I can't resist a pretty face. So the way we're going to run this first adventure as an introduction is that you are already on your way to whatever it is that you're going to do. And we're going to do a little bit of uh, um, uh, oh, the word, the word that is in my mind that is going to escape me right right now. Gambling. Um, role play. No, <laughs> Hopefully a lot of role play. Um, Combat. Murder. That, that sex. Too. Well, I leave that entirely up to you. Parkeasy, uh, maybe? Monopoly. Oh, God, no. no Pop no, card no. draw. Oh. Uh, we're going to go back. Texas hold them. <laughs> As you're going, we're going to go back and show scenes of you and how you came to this mission. Uh, there's oh, flashbacks. Flashbacks, yes. That's I love cool. a good flashback episode. Yeah. So, um, 
you are here. You're starting at Norwell. You're in this at B12. Uh, Go and that's, Bingo. Uh, and, uh, and you're exploring this hex. Your mission is to hunt a group of gnolls who have been taking prisoners in, uh, from woodsmen and nearby villages. Um, okay. You took in the excitement. It was on a board posted uh, in the village square. Uh, 200 uh, gold pieces for the head of the leader of these uh, miscreant gnolls and at least 10 gold pieces for each head that you bring back uh, from his hunting party. The, the gnolls have been described as having a, a blind in one eye and a scar. So it's uh, an obnoxious figure. So it's relatively easy to, uh, to recognize. Um, so let's start with... Uh, uh, making now that you're stepping outside of Norwell, let's make uh, it's gonna take you a day to explore. Well, not this, this hex is considered to be explored, so let's do a survival check. Uh, our ranger can do a survival check to see if they he can pick uh, the tracks in the snow, uh, because it's been snowing heavily. Uh, I'm better with beasts than men, but these things are mostly beasts, yeah. Uh, it's been snowing mostly this last week or so at the beginning of the year, every night or so. So tracks are very difficult to find, but you know your terrain, you know the area, you know you have to head southwest uh, from your location, uh, which is going to take you, it's going to be difficult to rain, uh, and it's going to be uh, in this direction uh, over here. Uh, you don't know exactly where, but uh, I can move the map. Uh, you got to control see that. Yeah, you got to see that. Uh, there we are. So let's hey. put our in objects and tokens. That's much better. So you're in this general area. So the next has over, which is a B10. Mm -hmm. Soon you're going to have bingo. Um, and so as you're walking, you're leading the way. Uh, what's the general marching order? And it's cold. Uh, it's not snowing. It's it's early in the morning. It stops snowing around uh, in a few hours at late at night. Uh, but uh, you you got up and you left it uh, at, with the crack of dawn. So the snow it's about a foot or so uh, deep um, outside of the main roads, and even in the road itself is pretty dusty. So who what's the marching order? And you are you marching at full speed, thirty feet average? Are you trying to you know keep your keep pace so that you keep yourself? Uh, Uh, I'm probably going to be going a little bit ahead and uh, leading the way because I have to show everyone where these tracks are going. So after uh, you're sp finding out, we'll start with you uh, and the first flashback. You are standing about a day or so ago in the village square. Uh, there's very few people because it's been snowing. Uh, usually in this area, it's not that cold even in the winters because... There's an ocean nearby that brings uh, hot air from the south, and that tends to uh, make it more temperate, it's more rainy rather than snowy. Oh, gosh, I'm back at the Gulf Coast. But uh, yeah, this time around, yeah, it's been snowing you know, unusually for about a week or so, usually at night when it, the temperatures dip, deep, mm -hmm. uh, dip, I should say. Um, so you're standing in front of the board, and there's a few people who look, and they're crossing by behind you, etc. And uh, and you see different postings. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you see in common mostly, uh, and one of them is for this this knoll, right? Um, what what does what experience does um, Oliver have with with these types of creatures in particular? Well, I've been out in the woods plenty to hunt, and sometimes you come across hunting parties, which, you know, maybe want to trade, maybe tell which paths everyone's going so they can stay out of each other's ways. Some are more amiable than others, but these gnolls are probably not amiable at all. The orcs could at least be reasoned with. These things are out for meat, and uh, all the better to stay as far away from these as possible and maybe set some traps in front of their way, if you listen in long enough. And as, as um, a man, a human, um, about well, about your size, he's uh, mm -hmm. well, here, about a bit shorter, uh, so about five six or five seven. He's you know he's born little colds like damn knows. <clears throat> I heard rumors, have you? About Indeed. making sac sacrifices to evil gods and such, taking prisoners. They're back to it again, then. Oh, well, at least the orcs will you. Yeah, well, the orcs at least will take you for hard labor and the like. 
if you can prove yourself to them, maybe you have a chance. But uh, not Knowles. They believe in demons and such. I'd have to wonder which would be worse, waiting for them to eat you or waiting for them to sacrifice you. I don't think anyone should have to be put up with that choice, though. Oh. Thinking about going after them? And I'll just, like, snatch, like, the uh, flyer straight off. Well, right. I suppose I have something to do today. Good idea. I thought the Shire Reef put that up. Now that we don't have the headhunters to help us, it's good that people are stepping up and doing the dirty work. Yeah. So good luck with that, that one. Because you're going to need it. I'm grateful. Well, perhaps I'll find someone else to give me a little bit of extra luck, too. Oh, morning. yeah. I, was, uh, I don't want to be too noisy already, but I guess I spoke already. Uh, there's a lady orc over the uh, gateway. She seems mighty strong. You might mm. want to talk to her. Good See? enough place to start as any. Well, I like yeah. already looking up. True, true, true. Yeah. Well, I said enough already. I have to get her inside. Ooh. You have a good day. I'm cold. Take care. May the goth bless your past there. And I'm going to go harass a, a half orc. <laughs> and as Oliver uh, is. Is taking path across the snow, the crunching of the snow uh, below his, his, his uh, boots. Uh, we go to uh, Batra, who is, is sitting down at the gateway. She has a table there, and uh, you know it's you know it's your table because nobody bothers you. Uh, do you have your axe still in your back, or you have it like on the side or somewhere while you're having? Just you know, kind of leaning against the table. Okay, just leaning there on the table, so east, yeah. within ease reach. Um, the main door opens, uh, and three humans, very bundled up, uh, coming in. All right, let's let's go some place, Nanny. Come on. Uh, seems to be the leader, the taller one. Uh, they look bulky because they're wearing, you know, essentially they they're not so used to the weather, so basically they just layered up with whatever they have, right? So they have mm -hmm. scarves and shirts and. And a, a like like several coats, um, and maybe one of them has a scarf that may be from a, I don't know, from some fox scarf, scarf or something, you know, to keep his neck warm. Um, and they go to the to the bar and goes like, three rails, please, I'm not up." And they go, they wait, they pick up the ales, and and they sit uh, by a table uh, nearby. It's empty. The place is empty except for. The, bar, the owner, bartender, and behind the bar, and someone else in the kitchen stuff. It's it's early in the morning, so you know not much to do. Uh, and they're drinking, right? And apparently they haven't taken notice of you. But then the bigger fellow um, kind of looks in your ears like, "Oh, what do we have here?" Hey, lots. And one one of them, which is more teen, is like, "Oh, come on, Rufus, I'm sorry, no trouble now." Come on, like shut it. He gets up, you know, and you realize that the uh, not only humans they're young, right? That this Rufus is barely has a beard, and the other ones are just have like a you know they barely have uh, uh, um, a mustache or something like that. And and he comes over and puts his knuckles in their tape in front of him. Uh, so what do we have here? One of them screen skins come to town, eh? I suggest you move along. Why is that? This is our town now. Always has been. I don't want to cause any trouble. Just move along. Hands and going it, through the axe. <laughs> and, I, uh, and you see the other two. Um, or you can make an insight uh, check. Uh, yeah. To get the feeling of, of what. Uh, and also a good way to explain how we're going to use insight in the game. Oh, yeah, that was terrible. Yeah, Infant usually gives you a, a feel of the motion, right? It doesn't it's not a light detector? It's like you know, are they feeling scared? Are they there? But you know, they just feel hostile to you, right? Fidgety, <laughs> but it's kind of like to you, it's like, well, they're just gonna be, you know, problem. How much of a problem? I'm not really sure, but they yeah. seem to be whatever a problem. And as a, as the big guy sort of squares himself, it was like, well, right. and then somebody tops in the shoulder, like, what is it? Oh. You see, towering over him is the owner. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he's wearing an apron and he has no 
beefy, you know, arms and barrel chested. He has a belly that, that matches matches his chest, right? Bald with a you know handlebar mustache, just like. Well, that's. I think it's time for you to go now. Uh, well, you know, her. It's like no, 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 no. I think it's time for you to drink up and leave. Sooner the better. And that's what you noted that he basically has on his belt as a large cleaver that could easily yeah. pass for for an axe, right? If you were to swing at somebody, he could easily chop fingers or even a hand or two um, with it. It's, it's like, but you know that leave now. Either you can leave with your drinks after you drink them, or before they do that. Your choice. <laughs> and the skinny guy was like, "I call you." And they sort of wander off, and they they, they just go up their drinks and leave. And he just cross his hands. He's like, "Well, I'm sorry about that. Um, didn't expect I'm anybody sorry. to give you any trouble. No, no, it's no worry, my lady. Your money has always been good here. I know you never start any trouble. So, just relax, have a drink. Um, things have been uh, uh, with the cold and everything. People have been a bit edgy. Uh, yeah, I understand." Shoes. No, well, it's no excuse, really. It's just an, as my mother used to say, understanding is not the same thing as excusing. You know, it just helps to know what's happening. So have that drink on me for break for the for the bother. Uh, and if you need anything, just just uh, let me know. Because cool. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Well, yeah. Oh, by the way, um, I heard of. Um, a few things that are happening. Uh, the Shire Reeve seems to be looking for good men and women uh, to do some things. He's posted a couple of things on the board outside. Uh, people usually use that board to say, oh, I don't know, I need just three and dozen eggs or something like that. But if you started to use it for, you know, other business. So if you need anything, you know, my good to chase, you know, might want to check it out. I'm not chasing you out of my telephone. You're always welcome here, of course. But, you know, People who have money buy drinks. And I always love that. So, just so you know. Of course, I can always use more money. And, and he sort of walks away, drink. right? And he keeps his eye on the door, see if nobody comes in. And he does. All the brain is coming in. So, again, the area is empty. So, you see this sort of very large, very tall, large and tall uh, uh, innkeeper. You know him. You, you know how you've drunk before. Uh, Rufus and uh, yeah, he's going behind the bar and stuff like that. And it, the place is empty except for three mugs that are in a table. We don't know who was drinking there. And then close to the uh, to the chimney to the is a, a half orc lady who is uh, sitting there with a, a, a double uh, not a double axe but a very large axe against the uh, the table. Uh, so what do you do? Uh Olerbin will approach, and uh, it's been made clear uh, Vashra has an axe, right? <laughs> so uh, Olerbin will go ahead and step up and sort of nonchalantly ask, uh, that axe, is that a Pamar's design? Is it? <laughs> well, that yeah, would be I mean, the Orcish Empire to the south. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. We've it's come a long way. Being handed down from my family. It's the last thing I have of my tribe. And Olerbin will go ahead and take a seat down and go, yeah. well, I suppose as long as you're here, you may as well get some more things. And I'll go ahead and pull out the flyer and I'll just pass it along. And of course, uh, front and center in front of him is probably, in front of uh, her is probably going to be the 200 gold. I <laughs> uh, could always use 200 gold. <laughs> I'm thinking uh, of setting up an expedition here. The town are full of good people, but I don't think any of them look quite like a warrior like yourself. If they were to go out and do this, they'd either be lining their bellies or stacking their altars. I could so, use some help. Yeah. Um, looking over the the flyer, it's basically got the the knolls on it. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, kind of. She looks it over and goes. Yeah, I'll do it, but not not just for the gold, you know, for the fight, for the glory. 
seems like a worthy cause. If they're as terrible as I've heard, there'll be quite a fight. I can get you that. <clears throat> Sounds good to me. Still, I think just the two of us versus a whole tribe probably isn't really um, great odds, if I'm honest. Yeah, not great odds for them. I saw you had a few friends before, but maybe we ought to go and see who else is around that might be willing to assist. And we cut to uh, a, a caravan that comes in uh, and with a lot of uh, foodstuffs and the like. And aboard that caravan, there's two of our characters. One of them is Elves, and the other one is Gar. We have come from the east, from slightly warmer climes, uh, because you're closer to the coast. So essentially, as you were in the caravan over the road, it started raining, and by the time you got here uh, at night, it was snowing. Um, which is about a day, day and a half travel, maybe a couple of, couple of days at most. And so you're getting there, and it's like, you know, they're taking it out. And somebody offers Elspeth their hand. It's like, the lady, be so kind uh, to get down. And uh, most people just sort of ignore Gar uh, in the caravan. Other people stare because they've never seen their total before, right? especially the children. Uh, hmm. And while that is happening, and you're yeah, you, know, you have you have been in this caravan together. Have Elspeth and Char had a time to <clears throat> discuss or talk among themselves, and you know, or have they kept to themselves uh, in the in in the travels? Um, I I think Elspeth would have been amongst those who were uh, staring at least in at least within the first couple hours of their travels, but eventually, you know, mine at her own, um, unless unless spoken to, of course. I mean, if that's the way of things. Then I've probably spent most of the journey in my shell, because <laughs> I can retract in. <clears throat> so, if it, it's such a cold climate that uh, rain turned into snow, then I was probably just keeping myself warm by being in my shell. And also, we have—I uh, know you're eating, Nick, but you—you uh, you can do I'm business. Good. Uh, do, uh, Halpin and usually does business around the uh, the yard, the the uh, where caravans come in and out. And you're discussing someone with one of your clients. Really, you you're trying to pawn off basically some bubble that you found. You know, uh, you, you you know their luck is not being going very well lately. People, you know, because the guard, the watch is being harassing you a lot, and you're spending more time and more nights in the in jail. That on the streets, which makes your job a little bit harder. You know, you can pawn off this thing they have, you know, which is basically paste for coppers, maybe a couple of silver pieces if you're lucky, right? And you're sort of discussing this in the corner, and you see these, you see other people getting out of the caravan, which is the one only caravan here, uh, but you notice, of course, there's a, a total, right? Rumors of them, there's some of them they're found during the coast, along the coast, but not this, this way far inland. And a, and a half elf uh, lady who was also uh, they they stick out out of the you know the the workers and the caravaneers etc. It's like oh well, come on come on no how much uh, here I'm just gonna give you like uh, uh, the fifteen copper that's that's my best offer fifteen right. coppers come on you got to give me at least twenty five that's just I, I know <laughs> and you know that's paste in the market it's not good for paste. The few ladies that we have here that are going to buy this stuff, they want real. Okay, paste, paste it is, but it's quality paste. Look at that craftsmanship. I mean, come on, you're not going to get better than this. Tell you what, split the difference, 20 coppers. Uh, make a charisma roll for me. Or persuasion, if you have it. Uh, let's see, do I have, I better have persuasion? <laughs> get 12, then. Twelve. All right, I'm gonna make it seventeen. Then. Seventeen. 17 okay, seventeen coppers. It is. You can't see the money thing. You gotta bring me better stuff. You know, like I can't. I can't live on literally paste. Neither can you. One. I, I suggest you just deal whatever it is when you have the problem with the watch before we start doing business again, because I don't want that kind of trouble on me. 
God, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Not a problem for the, the the watches friends with me. Okay, we just they like to talk to me. We hang out. We do business. I mean, it's it's just like I do business with you. I got interests all over the place. Okay, I can't survive off paste alone. You said so yourself. And as you're talking, he's like, "Yeah, yeah uh, it's I gotta go." And he turns around. Like, he turns on his heel and gotta go. And since you're known, you get this presence behind you, very familiar presence. Of one of the watchmen. And it's like, ah, little Ransa. Doing business again in the yard, are we? Hi, eh? Hi, no, just just talking to my friends, hanging out, having a good time, you know, you know how it is. I'm clean, I'm good, I'm I'm safe these days. Come on. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, normally I just would just, just kick you the button, have you go on your way. But the Shire Reef wants to talk to you. Don't ask me why. And don't make me chase you. Oh, no, no, uh, let's go see the Shire Let's go see him. I'm more than happy to go see him. Let's go have a talk with him. I'm sure he's got work for me. Let's go see. Yeah. He almost, you almost feel like he's going to grab you by the top of, you know, by the back of, of the shirt, but he's like, he kind of pushes him. Come on. Uh, and the Shire office slash home is right next to the mayor's, right? This is, basically, it's the mayor, uh, which is now uh, basically the captain of the guard has that uh, position. Of the entire the Shire Reef is well, he's you know, he takes up taxes and the local guard, the captain deals with the forces of, of of the area, which also includes other areas as well. So it's a strange division of labor. It used to be there used to be a baron here that ran everything, but like I explained in the in session session zero, he got hanged because he got caught with the hand of the cookie yard. Uh, and his masters in Greyhawk did not like that. Fell out of favor. And died. So, you know, they push the door in, and, and there's a, a, a sort of a waiting room. Um, and there's a scribe there. So he looks up, it's like, she looks up, like, oh, the room again, eh? Why, that's he done now? Ah, that's how I read what to say, him, Miss. It's like, really? This little bitty? Fine, have him wait. Uh, he's not going to go anywhere. Just close the door behind you. It's bloody cold. I, I, I will. And you sit and you wait. You wait. You wait. Finally, uh, you hear a voice uh, from deeper in, in the back office. Albert? Oh, that, I think that's you, Runt. Go ahead. Yeah, mm-hmm. you go away. And you open the door, and you see uh, an older gentleman, an elf, um, and uh, relatively well dressed. But underneath his dress, he actually has mail. He's clearly someone who is not, he's prepared for a battle. Uh, someone who's used to, you know, carrying his protection. He has, there's a sword nearby, etc. Uh, have a seat. I'm going to go grab a seat then. What's on the desk? Uh, mostly papers and ink, uh, ink, uh, ink, a pot with, uh, you know, a feather on it, uh, you know, a pen, and most of that. You now, maybe there's a paperweight of an ugly, uh, it, you know, first it looks like a, a, a tiny little bust, some kind of elk, I think, but it's, it's like in, in wood. It doesn't look very pretty. Oh, well, I'm going to pick up a pen and start playing with it nervously. Put it on the desk, please. Okay. You're welcome. Now, you're probably wondering why did I call you in. Do you know why I called you in? Why do you think you called me in? You know, you're too clever by half. Which basically means you're not clever at all. Most of the time, you're the exception. Mm-hmm. So, I have a proposition. I'm I not that kind of gnome. <laughs> yeah, the half part is coming back to me. <laughs> I, I put a, a notice on the board out in the village square, a little hunting party. Hopefully, if somebody's 
wants to uh, pick it up and they come here and um, decide to take the job, I want you to join them. What are we having? No. Okay. There's good money in it. And it'll be said that I would not, you know, pay good gold for a good day's work. Uh, it's about 200 gold for the head of the uh, head no. Of course, that would be divided depending on who exactly how many people tend to this little hunting party. Speaking you... of other people, do you have anyone lined up? Not really. You're my first volunteer. And it'll be good for you, Runt. I mean, come on. You'll be spending most nights in our jail. That's not going to be good for business, is it? I don't really have a choice here, do I? Think of this as an opportunity to be of my good grace <laughs> and earn some gold. You probably Can't haven't be. seen a gold coin in a while, have you? It's been a while, and far be it from me to refuse your uh, your good graces. Where, uh, when are you planning on starting this trip? Ah, uh, well, I the notice came up. I put them on yesterday. Some people have been um, talking about it. I'm expecting anyone to uh, come in today or tomorrow, the latest, to uh, decide if they want to join this little thing. Uh, you you are very resourceful, little one. So I think you probably hear them before I do. In fact, it might be a little something extra if you can, I don't know, tell me the uh, the measure of them before I actually get to talk to them. A little intelligence, if you will. Well, if you want a little intelligence, why don't you just send your guard? Why should I do this the hard way when I can do it the best way? You underestimate I'm yourself. Flattered. All right, you got yourself a deal. I thought you would. You saved yourself a night on the jail tonight, which is always good, because I heard that place is muddy and cold and uncomfortable. It smells like piss, too. Well, if you piss on the floor, it's not going to go anywhere else, but, well, there. Oh, now I know for next time. Well, I'll be on your way. Um... Elspeth and, and uh, Char, basically the the closest inn, it's usually a pub, uh, near the, the yard, which is sort of next to the uh, village square, is the gateway, uh, which is right, you know, it's called the gateway because it's literally on one of the, of the entrances of the, uh, of the town, usually the south entrance. You go in and you turn and that's sort of the, the village square actually is a triangle. And so it's, you know, starts at the bottom here. You go to the bottom, and the right business on the on your left is the gateway. So it wraps around the corner uh, of the village square. Uh, and basically, if you if you ask for at least for you know a good place to eat, and somebody who can tell you about uh, you know where to go, Norwell, that's a good place to start. It's like, I might want to check the gateway now. That's a good place to start. Okay. Uh, yeah, then that's uh, that's where we'll be going. Looking for somewhere. Warm, get a change of pace from this frozen wasteland for a minute. And they basically tell you the same thing, Char. Uh, whether you decide to come out of your shell or not, that's entirely up to you. Gar. Gar, sorry. I don't know why I say Char. Not Gundam, though. That's a different thing. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll play Char if you want. <laughs> yeah, no. I better, get, be uh, I better get a giant red Gundam, though. Yeah. <laughs> and new type powers, too. too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, See the future uh, a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so, guard, they tell you the same thing, um, and um, <laughs> and uh, and you go in, and uh, again, now we have uh, <coughs> we have I don't remember these names: Oliburn and Bashra there, and there's two more, uh, two new people that are coming in: a half elf and a portal. Someone, you know, I thought like a man-sized 
Portis was walking in their hind legs. So, you know, you haven't never seen one of those before. So, you know, but nobody seems to be screaming or trying to fight or anything. So it seems everybody's cool with it so far. Well, Ben will just kind of like give a long stare while sitting here with Basher. It's like, <laughs> huh? <laughs> Never seen that. I think as a courtesy, Elspeth holds the door open for him. Just like, like she's o- holding the door open for him, letting him in. But like, there's this still like, this is like a person, right? Like this is. Oh yeah, he spoke and everything. I'm sure. Yeah, not much it, probably, but you know, probably one of the weirdest folks she's ever seen. Thank you. <laughs> no, that's what I say when you hold the door open for me. I'm not thanking you out of character for calling oh, me a weirdo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, of course. Uh, and once you're in, she's going to like hold it still for a second and then just close it like, all right, yeah, this is happening. And uh, yeah, uh, the bartender is there. It's so like, uh, what's your business? What can I get you? Ah, uh, just anything warm to drink, please. Okay, two of me to come up. Uh, this is your fellow here going to drink something? Good, sir? What's the minimum? We have ale, we have meat. Meat is not as, as warm as the ale that we have. Give me can give you a, a tea. hot water. Well, I could give you a tea, sir. That will be the minimum. Can you give me a tea but hold the leaves? I suppose I can. I'll take one of those. Take... All right. I'll then. take the leaf water, actually. Very well. A tea and warm water. Right back. And it goes back and that basically it takes a while for it to boil and brings back, you know, basically brings this little bowl. With the two bowls actually for the tea and the warm water. Uh, the, he tells you one that doesn't because one of them actually has a couple of leaves that are. It's like uh, that one is a tea, lady, and that one is a warm water. Uh, just a copper for both, okay, if you don't mind. Oh, of course, of course. And she'll put one down on the table for him and start okay. tending to her tea. Yeah. If, if you don't mind me asking, um, I haven't seen the like of you around here. Um, sir, no, we know disrespect, of course. Uh, just a curious side, that also. Uh, is there anything I can do for you? Actually, I seem to have misplaced my coin, Varus. You. Very well, I'll take care of that for him. Okay. Oh, you already paid for the copper, so that's for both. I mean, I'm not going to charge extra for warmed up water. That seems a bit too much. Um, <laughs> so, enjoy. If you want anything stronger, by all means, let me know. Thank you. Now, um... Yes, I turn to Elspeth and say, thank you again. And, and, and oh, she knows you. that Elspeth is a, uh, notices that half elf. It's like, uh, my lady... I don't mean to I... be rude, but we do have a uh, an orcish guest. She is welcome in my home uh, and my establishment, so I would ask you to be polite as possible. I'm not accusing you or anything, just that, you know, first impressions can be harsh. Uh, she's actually, as far as I know, honorable lady, and, uh, you know, she pays for her drinks, which, which is what I really care about, to be honest, uh, and doesn't come to a lot of trouble. So please. Uh, <clears throat> I have no problems with anyone who doesn't have problems with me. That's all right. Ah, marvelous. Enjoy your tea. And your not so warm cup of water, sir. That was a double negative, I believe. (laughs) And he goes like, what? I think she said that she has problems with people that have problems with her. No, no, no. I have no problems with anyone who has no problems with me. Right. Double negative. You get rid of both the negatives. You have a problem with people that have problems with you. No, no. That that sentence is grammatically accurate. I have no problem with someone who has no problem with me. 
Right. I, that, that's grammatically accurate. Look, but I, then you step out onto the town, someone's going to go, I ain't got no problem. It's like, so you do? <laughs> that's different. That's different. And, and you see, you're having this conversation. This is something I'm saying in character, by the way. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I said there's going like, I understood that. I mean, it's perfectly <laughs> I, I think either way, my intention is is clear. Mm, okay, then. Mm. If you're looking for an inn, there's some in further in the town. I wish this is just a pub, but of course, grub and, and drink and any good time can be had here. Uh, well, depending on what you're talking about, a good time. There's things we don't do here. Like what? But, <laughs> he looks at you, down at you, because he's pretty tall. I was like, uh, I will not mention that. Well, then how do I know not to do them here? I will tell you when you start doing them. So I have to start doing something that we don't do here in order not to do it here. But at that point, I'll have already started doing it. <laughs> how far into doing something are you doing it before you're considered to have done it? I have an idea. Why do we not just drink our respective beverages and enjoy the quiet? That is a wonderful idea. He's he looks completely flummoxed. He's like it's like what? <laughs> I mean, I thought it. Uh, if you need anything else, like food or something, you know, the, the kitchen will be open in an hour. Thank so, you. Or so, yeah. So yeah, only man, you you see this confounding uh, exchange with the uh, with the uh, bartender. Yeah, I'm just looking over at, like Vasher. It's like he's got a dizzying intellect, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and how about that? you're you're doing your your rounds, and one of the people that you do business with is the nephew of Rufus Nephews ne nephew. Uh, basically, he deals in a lot of stuff that just falls from the back of the uh, of the pub, as you were right, knickknacks and things that are found here and there. Uh, and when he wants to pawn them off somebody, he basically gives them to you to, to sell. Uh, so, yeah, he's basically, you know, he's basically washing one of these very large barrels of, uh, of, um, of mead with, with warm water because it's freezing. He doesn't want to, you know, freezing. It's like, and here there's a scrubbing, right? Um, do you have anything for him today or you think that he might have something for you or you're simply paying him a friendly visit? I, I think he might have something for me. And he's taking like a broom, like I mean, one day I'm gonna own this place, but not today. <laughs> and he sort of he's, he he takes that sort of broom and I'm like, oh, oh, ah, run, ah, there you are. Mm. Wow. Hmm. Um, but it's something I can help you with. Oh, just wondering if you've got anything for me today, Rufus. Rufus? Oh, that's my uncle. Everybody calls me Jim. Jimmy. Jim. Jimmy. 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 You're going to own this place one of these days, just not today. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Not today. So so uh, what what's going on, Jimmy? What's uh, what's what's the good word around? Well, I don't know. Some weirdo just came in the main door, and then my uncle sent me out here to start cleaning the vats again. Weirdo? What do you mean, weirdo? The giant turtle man thing? I've seen the likes of him A before. Turtle man. Yeah. That's. That's quite the story there, Jimmy. You've been drinking? No, no, you can actually see him. I mean, we had to go around, of course, in the front door, but you know, you know that Rufus doesn't like you coming to the kitchen like you always oh. do. Oh, I mean, as long as Rufus doesn't catch me, he won't get mad. But then he catches me when he knows that you've been going through there and he gets mad at me, not you, me. And I That's gotta... the plan, yeah. That's not a good plan, Jim. I mean, how about it? It's a perfect plan for me. Nobody gets mad at me. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for the heads up, Jimmy. I'm gonna I'm gonna go take a look at this uh, turtle man. 
also uh i heard about something about some some hunt or something some posting the elf you know that elf hunter that comes in every other day here yeah he said he uh he had um a notice thing about uh you know hunting them so dolls or something well tell you jimmy if it's uh if it's posted as a notice it's there for anybody to see so uh i mean that's that's no big secret son is uh, there something about a couple of hundred gold i mean i would go out myself to do it but uh, <laughs> you know i'm busy here so <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, Jimmy, I mean, you're a busy man. You're going to own this place someday. Just yeah. not today, right? Not today. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. Well, I'm going to I'm going to toss a copper coin at Jimmy for the information. Thanks. Thanks for the info, Jimmy. Let me uh, let me go take a look here. You, you have yourself a great day. OK. And uh, I take it you actually go through the kitchen, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let him, don't let him catch you. Yeah. Little Gonna let the door slam shut on my way through. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy! <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you go in, and the scene before you, everybody's here. Uh, one, on one table, there is uh, uh, Raksha. You, you, you've seen her here before, right? Uh, she's a, a regular. Uh, Oliver, Burn, the hunter that comes in and out, um, and the new newcomers, uh, Gar and Elspeth. Uh, of course, you don't know them by those names yet, but for the audience, uh, the turtle, <coughs> turtle man, apparently, uh, and a half-elven lady. Yeah. Aside from that, there's nobody else here. Well, of course, you. We just came in. <laughs> So Basra and um, and Oliver, you're discussing, you know, the terms of of this hunt, and uh, I just don't know who else would be as foolish enough to come along with us. I mean, that thing over there that seemed pretty. Oh yeah, yeah. Him. Well, it would do the town a favor if he was out for a few days. But how could we convince him? You can always offer him free food again as to go on a camping trip, but he didn't like it the last time either, so then again, maybe he's down on his luck. I'll have to find out. Yeah. Well <laughs> maybe he needs to get out of town for a bit. <laughs> maybe he needs to lay it low. So I'll at least get out of everyone's hair. Yeah. Albert! Albert, over here. Oh, oh, is that you, Ullerman? How you doing? Oh, well, you know, fine as the morning sun, but, uh, well, at least the hunting's been good, if nothing else. I was planning on going on another trip. You've been doing well on money lately, haven't you? Well, I, uh, you can never have enough. Well, you know, last time I didn't quite give you a deal when I went, when went out, but I know how much you like having more money. So what if we went on another hunting expedition, but I let you sell off what we got? Well, Olerben, it's it's interesting that you that you be saying so because I've actually got a little trip of my own going on here. I've been looking oh, really for some now? help. Someone yeah. actually convinced you to get run out of town already, then. Oh. <laughs> Well, I mean, you, 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 you know, you keep making remarks like that, my lad, and I'll have to feed you to the nulls. <laughs> oh, so it's a race then. Oh. I was going to try to be at least a little sly about it, but that's where I'm thinking of going. I have mm -hmm. to go deal with them. But I mean, if I had someone as trustworthy as you at my back, and definitely not in town harassing people like the poor tavern owner over here, Wait, wait a minute. Who's trustworthy? I don't see any trustworthy people <laughs> around here. Uh, this is. Sorry, I'm have trying we to met? tell him a lie, Vashra. I mean, have we met? Do I know I, you? I... <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, me. didn't think so. Okay, so <laughs> what were we? Uh, what were we saying here? Oh, yeah, I, I no, could just... use this. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you first, of course. 
Well, I mean, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I could use a strong arm if I'm, uh, if I'm going hunting gnolls here. You do know how dangerous it is, though, right? Well, I mean, I can either uh, go in with backup and and ha- have a have a little bit of one on one scuffled up fisticuffs, or or I can go on my own and try to avoid being seen. Now, I think my chances increase with somebody who can swing a sword. Or an axe. Well, I can claim to at least do that much. But uh, somehow I've managed to catch you in a mood where you're actually willing to do work. I'm just honestly astounded, first of all. There's but I am grateful this. if you're willing to come with us. There's some angle to this. <laughs> well, okay, here's the angle. See, it wouldn't be me coming with you so much as you coming with me. Right. Oh, so you are getting run out of town. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I guess there's a first time for everything being a parole officer. Wouldn't say it's the first time I've been run out of town. (laughs) It'll be the first time it's my problem. So let's say you, have we an accord? Ah, yes, as long as you don't happen to uh, take from anyone's wallet while we're out there, then yes. Take from anyone's wallet? Would I do such a thing? By the way, I'm going to pick up the uh, silverware while I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> you You'll probably also me. like see like the actual advertisement is like yeah. on the table, or just like straight up to it. <laughs> You've pickpocketed me twice now. I mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose that's at least I did, three. That's a I, I didn't pick your pocket, okay? Like I just saw something interesting, picked it up to look at it. It's not my fault. You left before I could put it back. Just shaking her head. Uh, I think at this point, uh, Elizabeth is going to approach the table, and um, she's. Significantly tall, even for a half elf, she's like six four, and standing next to um Halpert, it's like he looks small, but he looks real small now. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically, she's going to just sort of help herself to the flyer on the table. Oh, my um, lady! If if I recall, the flyer said something about the gnolls were like taking people. Yes. <laughs> The, the big, uh, it's a posting says uh, urgent uh, to hunt down the known headhunter and uh, it's a band of terrible thieves taking lives and treasure in and around Nordwell. Uh, 200 gold for the headhunter and 20 gold per head for these uh, for each of its accomplices. Please see the Chai Reef for more information and or the uh, you know the for payment and and such, action is required as soon as possible. Okay, um, so she's kind of like just scanning over this, like mumbling it as she like reads it to herself, and then sets it back down on the table. Uh, wow, you're a bit of mountain, aren't you? Ah, uh, you're a bit of a molehill, aren't you? <laughs> like there's no like making friends. There wasn't like any like malice behind it. It was just like snap <laughs> reflex. Like okay, <laughs> I like this elf. <laughs> well, dreadful um, stuff though, isn't it? I don't mean to divvy up rewards any more than they are, but this seems sort of up my alley. If you're still looking, really, I didn't. When you walked in, I didn't quite take you as a. Uh... Any kind of warrior. But mm. if you think you're up for the task, well, I suppose that's your own evaluation. Look at I... her, she'll stop paying attention and step on everything. I'll step on you <laughs> if you keep talking. <laughs> Unless you'd like that, in which case I'll refrain. Um refrain. I may not be I may not be much of a fighter, but um I am a cleric. I have access to Divine magics that can help keep you healthy, topped off, things like that. I see. That's always a benefit out in the wilderness. There's not much out there except ourselves, and, well, the less of us that die on the return, the better, honestly. 
My thoughts exactly. And what about your friend over there? See much uh, of a fighter. Uh, Seems like an old friend. Man. Friend is a term I would not use. Uh, we merely arrived together. Oh, well, my apologies for assuming. Um, you. One moment. <laughs> She's going to go back to the table. <laughs> uh, sir? Like, that's a question. Um, they're looking for more hands for some work. I don't know what your business is here, but... Well, I have two of those. And she, like, stops and double-checks, like, oh, yeah, he does, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll pick up my bowl of quickly becoming lukewarm water and <laughs> cross the room. I don't know the distance is here, but no, it's it's not that big. I mean, to I'd imagine yeah, probably five to ten feet, too. honestly. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Literally carry the conversation from where you were. <laughs> right, but I mean, I assume I'm like the second smallest person. Mm -hmm. Most um, likely. Yeah, so uh, we spoke and he and she like waves a hand like name uh he is he'll, he'll come along i heard you were short on uh short on some money when you came in is that correct i've lost my coin first <laughs> Olerbin will take out his coin pouch and he's just going to take it out set it down and slide it right over to you oh thank you Will, There's ten gold in there. I pick, take the entire purse. Yes. I do one of those retract hand into a uh, shell, <laughs> and then pull it back out, and there's nothing in my hand anymore. <laughs> I love that. Halpert's gonna just watch this in utter disbelief, okay? Like, just... <laughs> <laughs> Finally a point you can't Literally take. watching the elf just give away all the money you've seen him earn. <laughs> You, that's not what you do with money. No, no, no. <laughs> and Olivin just has a face of like, I did nothing wrong. Are you okay down there? Are you having a stroke? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else saw that, right? I did. Yeah. I did it even. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> I saw that. Uh. What would your name be, sir? I am Gar. Gar, pleasure to meet you. Well, if you come and do this work with us, there's plenty of more gold to be had. Okay. All right. I am amenable to this. Excellent. I mean, or you could just let him go do it and he'll give you the gold. <laughs> well, it'll end up in town eventually anyway. Actually... If I come back to town to get it, then it never leaves town. So it's as if nothing happened, anyway. So same to me. And you see that uh, Rufus comes in. Uh, uh, anyone want to refill uh, warm ale? Drink. Oh. And when you say drink, he looks down. And it's like, oh, runt. How did you get in here? Through the kitchen. <laughs> oh, of course you did. Jimmy opened the door. And you hear him go, Trevor! <laughs> and he, he stomps out. You know, and he has one of his family members come in with more meat for everyone. Mm -hmm. Tea, meat, warm water, and nothing for me. Yes, for, could uh, you please for... reheat my water for me? Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've taken, he, like, one sip out of it. You reheat it every two hours until it just boils away. Yeah. Uh, every so often, as you guys are discussing the, 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 the minutia of this, you hear, you know, sort of... The thing you hear when in kitchens, you know, it's like... <laughs> Family drama continues. Yeah, yeah. But you don't know... You can't... Well, maybe Halpern and I should get pick up... The, he's used to listening in, so he can pick up a couple of words. But mostly it's a sort of, like, we don't want to have this discussion in front of everybody... But I'm wringing your neck, at least, hopefully, metaphorically. Uh, <laughs> at least for Jimmy, we hope. Uh, and so they're having that discussion by there. <laughs> right. 
So while that's like in the background, I'll just like turn to everyone and go, I didn't have any plans for the day. I'm ready to head out as soon as possible. But I understand you two just came to town. If you need some time to rest or get a full meal or anything, then of course we'll wait. <laughs> 